Hey everybody, I'm Nafil from JetBrains and welcome to PyCharm 2021.2. In this release, we have a wide range of things to discuss, but first and foremost are Python features. Structural pattern matching is a new PEP introduced in Python 3.10, and PyCharm 2021.2 supports it. The first thing I'm going to do in this example is take an input and save it to the command variable. And then I'm going to pass the command variable into the main handler. And I'm also going to surround this with a while loop so that I can constantly try new commands. Now, the main handler is going to do one of three things. Either it is going to get the command of greet, which will tell me that, hey, I want to greet someone. So I'm going to print out hello. In the case of time, I'm going to print out the current time right now, and I'm going to use the datetime.datetime.now method to help me do that. And lastly, if nothing else matches, I am going to use the catch all case and just say that no command was given. Okay, now that this is complete, let us run it. And to begin with, we're going to say greet and we get back hello, we're going to say time, and we get back the time, and then we're going to do nothing, and then we see no command given. So we also have debug support for pattern matching in PyCharm 2021.2, so we can go ahead and debug that. We can type in greet in the beginning, that is not going to be caught by our debugger, but once we just pass in an empty string, and by the way, it doesn't need to be an empty string, it just doesn't have to match anything else, and we will see that breakpoint being triggered. We've added support for Python 3.10. And what that means is not only do you have support for match and case statements, but you also have support for the new type union operator. We've also added support for what is known as the type union operator. So in this example, I am going to take a path as one of the inputs for my main handler, and I am going to turn command into a path if it starts with a dot slash. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep the command as it is. Now, once that is complete, I am going to say that arg can be of type string or it can be of type path. And in my case statements, I'm going to add path as a possible option. And because we're casting arg as a path, we also have access to the isFile method. One thing to note here is that if you just put in path without the braces, this would not match. So now that we have checked that arg is a file, we're just going to go ahead and read from it because it is a path object. So we're going to go ahead and read text and we're going to print that. Now that all of this is over, all the setup is over, we can go ahead and run that. It tells us that we need to enter a command. So I'm just going to pop in to my run window and type in greet to make sure that everything is actually working the way we expect it to. Okay, now let's give it a path. So in this case, I already have a message.txt, and there we go. This is an automated message, enjoy. So everything works as expected, and the path is matching. But we didn't stop at that. We also added Python console support to code with me sessions. In this release of PyCharm, we've also added the ability to share your Python console via code with me. So in this case, I'm just going to turn off the voice call and I'm going to enable access. Once that's complete, I'm going to jump over to my other machine to show you what the view looks like over here. So this is my Windows machine and I am able to use the console. I am importing OS here. I'm just going to follow my other self and I can see import OS the console. I can type something in. In this case, all I'm going to do is find out the path for my current path, press enter, and then I can also see that reflected in the other console. We've also taken our HTML Live Preview, which was an in-IDE feature to something that works across all browsers. So now, whether you're using Chrome or Firefox, whenever you are saving your file and you have Live Preview on, you will see those changes in whatever browser you choose. 
our previously awesome in editor preview is now available across browsers. So in this example, I am going to use Chrome to demonstrate. And so when I hit save, I can see that the page has been reloaded. So if I get rid of all of this and I hit save, I can see the page reloading. I can head into my site.css and I can go in there and I can change the font size to something ridiculous. And when I hit save, that is also going to be reflected. And to add to that, for our React users, we've also added rename capabilities for React's use state hooks. So now you can react with ease. So in this case, if I rename count to something different, like for example, counter, you can see that is changed across the function. I can also rename it to number, and that is also changed and is capitalized in the handler as well. And lastly, we have some very interesting database features this time around, for example, with context-based live templates, as well as enhanced code completion for MongoDB. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive in. In this example, I have a MongoDB sales database and I'm going to find everything with a customer satisfaction of two. So here, when I go and type in customer satisfaction, I get code completion and I can see that I can put in two and I'm not getting any squiggly lines. The second thing I'm going to look for is that coupon used is true. And then I am just going to set it as an in editor view and I can see that result in editor. And here I can double check that indeed we have customer with a satisfaction of two. And over here, we can also see that coupon has been used. In this release, we've also added this cool new feature that allows you to automatically generate SQL scripts. So in this case, we want to select the first n number of rows from a table. So I can just right click and get that. And once that's complete, I can just limit it to 10 and I can get the results. Okay, folks, so before we go, just a few things. We've enhanced accessibility when it comes to reading things out on Mac OS. We've also have added the ability to change project icons and you can also run tests before you commit because now you can select run tests in your pre-commit hooks. And with that, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again in the next one.